This video will illustrate both aerobator and aggravator shafts being repaired as well as familiarize mechanics with the overall routine involved and maintenance work associated with them. For additional detail, review the parts manual as needed. In order to repair an aerobator shaft, one must start with the proper tools. These tools will be necessary to extract the rotor shaft from the machine, unstack the rotor shaft, and disassemble the individual rotor. Before starting, wash the machine and remove debris from the rotor shaft so parts can be clearly identified. Now an inspection of all rotors must be done. Lateral movement is an indicator of the natural wear of the bearing. Too much play may be a sign that the bearing is ready to be replaced. To begin the repair process, the belts, covers, and guards must be removed. It is beneficial to loosen the nuts on the ends of the rotor shaft while in the frame. Label the spacers on the rotor shaft to make reassembly easier. Remove the nut closest to the damaged rotor and unstack the shaft. Be sure to clean each part and place in a clean workspace. Only unstack the shaft to the damaged rotor or bearing. Removing the rotors unnecessarily can contaminate the rotor bearing and reduce its functional life. It is recommended that any rotor removed from the shaft during repair have their bearing adapter assemblies replaced. With the rotor free from the shaft, remove the seals and snap rings. Snap rings may be reused if not destroyed, while the seals must be replaced. To prevent bearing damage, it is highly recommended that the proper press tool be requested from the manufacturer. As seen here, the press tool should contact the outer edge of the bearing, not the adapter. Using the press tool, remove the bearing adapter assembly from the rotor. Once the rotor has been disassembled, it is time for the inspection of the bore. The press fit of the bearing to the rotor hub is critical for long life of the bearing. Examine the finish on the rotor hub and look for any signs of wear. The hub should have a relatively smooth annular surface with minor circumferential striations. The edges of the bearing, seen here, are the principal locations for the highest stress inside the rotor hub. Mark the points in the rotor hub where the bearing edges are making contact, as seen here. Once the rotor has been marked, measure the inside diameter of those locations to determine if the rotor hub can still be used. If the measurements are outside the tolerances displayed on the screen, the rotor must be replaced. Before starting the assembly process, it is highly recommended that each rotor be done individually by laying out the necessary components shown here. This will help ensure the use of all the snap rings and seals. Insert one snap ring on one side of the rotor and use the proper press tool to install the new bearing adapter assembly. Again, it is important that the press tool contact the outside edge of the bearing when pressing into the hub. Retain the assembly with the last snap ring. After applying a generous amount of high temp grease in the hub, use the press tool to install the outboard seals. Once complete, the table should be clear of any parts. The next step is to time the rotors. This is the most critical step in rebuilding a rotor shaft. To better understand the timing mechanics of the machine, it may be beneficial to look at the bearing adapter assembly within the rotor. Note how the assembly is comprised of two adapters pressed into the bearing that can rotate independent of each other. As seen here, each adapter has a timing mark. The aggravator timing mark is a triangle that can be seen just above the spacer. The 5 degree aerovator adapter is indicated with a dash mark and the 2 degree adapter is noted with a circle. 
The hex shaft seen here is used to simulate the main rotor shaft. The timing marks are always on a flat part of the shaft. For a rotor to be properly timed, the timing mark on one adapter must be 180 degrees out of phase with its counterpart. Notice the adapter surface in the bearing when the timing mark is off just one flat on the hex shaft. Improper timing will cause the bearing to lock up and fail immediately. It is important to know that the hex shaft will still slide through the assembly if they are not timed correctly as demonstrated here. Now with the rotor timed, it is time to illustrate how the rotors stack on the shaft. As seen here, it is clear that the rotors are stacked in a manner in which the timing marks face each other. The picture on the screen is found in the operator's manual. Again, the timing marks between the rotors face each other on the same flat of the hex shaft for most shaft assemblies. The only exception to the rule is the 30 inch rotor shaft, which has each rotor indexed every 120 degrees, two flats on the rotor shaft. With all the necessary parts laid out in order, start the assembly process. If shaft hanger bearings are replaced, make sure to put carriage bolts back in the flanges next to the pulley as shown here. Before stacking the rotors, reacquaint yourself with the timing marks found on the adapters. If there are existing rotors on the shaft that were not part of the repair, find the timing mark on the adapters. Use a marker to indicate the two flats of the hex shaft being used by the timing marks of the rotors. When sliding the spacers next to the rotors, make sure they properly seat themselves. These spacers must be fully seated against the adapters or damage will occur. Before sliding the repaired rotor down the shaft, double check to make sure the leading timing mark is on the proper flat. If so, the timing marks of the opposing rotors should face each other on the same flat. As you can see, the timing marks of the rotors repeat their pattern along the shaft. Before tightening the final nut, check the spacers to make sure they are all seated properly. Also, recheck the timing of each rotor to make sure there are no inconsistencies. The shaft nuts are torqued to 350 foot-pounds for the aerator and 1,000 foot-pounds for the aggravator. If a torque wrench is not available, apply 200 pounds at 5 feet for 1,000 foot-pounds of torque. For additional assistance, reference the parts manual for the specific model being repaired. Also, for units with considerable hours on them, it is recommended to replace all bearings on the shaft.